Hi guys, I'm James with Signature Solar. We've always focused on the cabinet solutions for rack mounted batteries in order to keep people safe and uh, prevent people from being exposed to high amperage. Uh, we originally had had cabinets and there was a shortage at some point with uh, the COVID-19 crisis. We shipped racks and then we ended up shipping doors and making doors available for people to put on their racks in order to keep their installations safe. Uh, these cabinets have very high amperage inside of them and it's something we would like to have under lock and key if we can. Uh, in November we were seeing massive growth on battery demand for the Life Power 4 batteries and also releasing our V2LL uh, lithium batteries and uh, we were making modifications to the cabinet and moved to a full welded body cabinet. Uh, the original assembled cabinet also was adjusted <laughs> in order to uh, fit the uh, additional space in front of the LL. Uh, and some cross compatibility issues have come up since then. If people use the Life Power 4 battery in the LL cabinet, or if they use the LL battery in the Life Power 4 optimized cabinet. Both of these cabinets can carry either type of battery safely. And in this video, I wanna demonstrate the best practice for any kind of crossover installation where you might be using Life Power 4 batteries in the new LL cabinet or if you are using the LL batteries in the Life Power 4 cabinet. Okay, so as you guys can see, this cabinet is pre-assembled. Uh, there's no uh, structural framework to put together like the original flat packs we had to use when logistics were more complicated. So uh, what we've got here is the V2 batteries, the LL V2 batteries inside of it. The LL V1s fit this cabinet perfectly. Uh, the V2s, we're going to go over some compatibility issues, and then I think a couple other just best safety practices that are in our battery manual, but uh, I'd like to demonstrate here as well, because we, we seriously mean them. Uh, so with the LL V2, the handle is a tight fit. It can lay flat. It'll come very close to the bus bar. Um, if you're going to install this in the cabinet with the handle still on the LL V2, then you will have to actually place the wire in a way where it is between the handle and the bus bar. And unfortunately, we don't recommend using the handles at all on the battery when you install them in this cabinet because the handles actually cover up the mounting holes. The mounting holes are directly behind the V2 handles. With all the additional hardware and complicated components inside of the V2, uh, the plastic housing is unable to hold the handles and the handles were for general handling and also for uh, applications where people were using a small number of them outside of the cabinets. Uh, I've got a handle here with me and it has screws you just take off before you install the batteries. People weren't really using the handles to push the batteries in. It was always a front grab, bottom grab, side grab. So it wasn't in the typical gripping places. Anyway, if I were mounting one of these in a cabinet, I would just take the handles off and then you'll find that the screw holes match up perfectly and you would use the same mounting screws that are used in the cabinet. Typically, we've got one placed here. It's directly in the handle hole. I'm gonna tighten it. And there we go, we have a fastened battery. We can do this on all four slots. Start with the one that's easiest to mount. You're trying to fit a square object inside of a rack so start with the first screw that fits and then the other ones will become easier as you go. Uh, so moving on to torque. Torque is a major important issue in any of these cabinets. All of these are high amperage electrical connections you're expecting to rely on for years. This is something that we can't be using in proper tools for the job. We have M8 bolts here and M6 bolts here. The M6 bolts are for connecting the individual battery packs to the 400 amp bus bar. And the M8 bolts are for connecting inverters and other loads to the bus bar. Uh, the bus bar, as I said, is about 400 amps capacity, given it being three foot long, it's 150 uh, square millimeters. So you can do your conversions on that of solid copper. Uh, each of the M8 connections, the inverter M8 connections, are rated for up to 250 amps uh, of continuous use. Uh, that's a 12 kilowatt inverter load. Uh, if you need more than that, then you may consider either A, using more than one wire, 
or B, you can drill a hole in the bus bar and use your own mounting bolt. For the M8 bolts, they are expected to be about 18 to 20 foot-pounds of torque with a torque wrench. And for the M6 bolts, they are expected to be about 10 foot-pounds of torque. I've got a torque wrench here for either size uh, because if, uh, you absolutely could just have one torque wrench and just adjust it. And uh, how these wrenches work, this one has my M6 connection on it. And if you look in here, there is a gauge which has the torque setting on it and then you slide the nut forward and lock it. Now when you go to use the torque wrench it is designed to click out when you have achieved the set torque. The torque wrench can continue to torque the bolt after that. It's basically just a rod of steel once you have engaged the lever up top which I'll show you in just a second. So you are waiting for that click. That click is a warning. It's not a fail safe. You can absolutely still over torque your connections if you continue to turn the wrench after you've heard the click. So be paying attention to that click. This is not useful or, under, or something that people tend to look at uh, if they haven't used one of these before. So here's a 4 aught cable. It has a UL crimp on the top and uh, we are connecting it to an M8 bolt. Uh, I have my torque wrench set for 18 foot-pounds as we discussed and I'm going to show you where the click occurs right here you saw that click. See how it clicks right there. If I can keep turning this as much as I want, and I will strip out the screw, I will probably ruin the rivet, I can do all kinds of things with it if I continue to do the wrong thing. But this is what a torque wrench is for. Exactly the torque that we wanted set for the bolt. Uh, you can do the same thing with your M6 bolts as you tighten them. We recommend you only use torque wrenches because frankly, without a torque wrench, there is no control on this. These are high amperage connectors we want to last for years. So to the point where some of the, uh, the, the main, the M8 rivets uh, stick out beyond the bus bar, uh, this was something that we were initially surprised by when we received them. Uh, we're attaching uh, FLIR images that we took of a thermal camera on a 250 amp connection which we ran for an hour and a half. Uh, this is more than double the amperage of our 6,000 and 6,500 watt inverters and uh, we were able to maintain the temperature of the connection uh, actually below the temperature of the UL rated crimp on the battery. The temperature of the connection was under 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we do believe that if you follow our 18 foot-pound torque rating on this terminal with the four gauge, uh, with four aught wire, uh, you can support up to a 250 amp connection. If you need a higher amperage connection, you are always permitted to drill a hole in the bus bar and stick your own bolt in, um, and uh, then there will be more surface area and connection capacity. Uh, some people are also looking at the uh, half inch inner diameter brass washers, which are available for a six packs under $2 from hardware stores everywhere. If you want additional amperage, uh, whatever you do, if you go above 250 amps, you make your own connection with the bus bar or you add washers. Uh, we recommend you use a heat gun and test the temperature of those connections for safety. Uh, and we also would say that in any circumstance, an M8 connection is specified for 18 foot pounds of torque. We're having a table posted here as well uh, to show you guys that uh, fact as well. So this is by removing the handles and using the handle holes to mount the batteries, this is how you can properly mount the V2 battery if you have a welded cabinet. So if you want to mix different battery types in the future, or if you've got a welded cabinet with your V2 batteries, this is how you do it. Um, and critically important, stay on point with the torque specifications. They really are there to keep you safe. Impact drivers, basic socket wrenches, you know, just freehanding this is a really bad idea. This is a battery bank, it has high amperage, and when you're done with these safety practices, you can always just shut the door and lock it and keep the rest of your family and friends safe. We've had customers with riv nuts and uh, general bus bar strip outs occurring even without the riv nuts. Um, we always give people the benefit of the doubt if they say they use a torque wrench. We just ask that people actually do use them 
and uh, stick with the torque specifications. It's a hassle on your end and ours for us to be shipping bus bars back and forth. Uh, we'll happily do it to support your project, but just, just work with us and keep your family safe by using the proper tools for high amperage electric connections. Okay, so if you're going to use a LifePower 4 battery with the V2 LL cabinet, then uh, there's a slight depth issue. The LifePower 4 is about uh, a quarter of an inch too far forward for uh, the back to meet the back of the cabinet and to mount the front ears. <laughs> so in this case, what we ask people to do is turn the brackets around on the LifePower 4 batteries with the LL V2 cabinet. A lot of people uh, bought the LL V2 cabinet, bought some LL V2 batteries. We've added BMS communications between LifePower 4 and LL, and so if you're trying to add that to your cabinet because it's a more cost-effective kilowatt hour price, you're welcome to do so. You just need to make the dog ear change, turn them around, and then uh, also the, uh, the bolts that the batteries connect to on the inside need to be adjusted. These little insert nuts need to be moved up a couple, uh, up, up a couple and down one, I believe. Uh, just check it and uh, set it. So this one right here, I've done that. We could put screws into it. Uh, the torque ratings, this bus bar here is made of M6 and M8 nuts as well. You already use the same 10 and 18 foot-pound torque ratings. Uh, one other thing that we're going to mention here is that once this install is done you know, and you talk about upgrades in the future, which is what everyone wants to do with a server rack battery potentially, being able to upgrade and service in the future. Any kind of service and upgrade has got to follow the absolute most amount of caution and professional care with electricity. This is high amperage, it can kill you. So if I was working on this cabinet, the first thing that I would do is turn every battery in this cabinet off and then I would use a voltmeter to confirm that there is no live voltage. You may still have capacitors in your inverter or other devices that have voltage which will discharge over a period of minutes. You can turn the breakers for those units off uh, assuming that you followed best practices and installed breakers with those inverters. Remember that one battery being on is enough to hurt you. So always power everything down if you're going to service one of your batteries or if you're going to upgrade. This is not a complete ad hoc just shove items in while the cabinet's live solution. It makes life a lot easier for people who want to upgrade their system in the future and a safe upgrade can be done within 20 minutes. We tried to shoot this video to demonstrate for people who are using the different types of batteries that we have with these two different cabinets how to, how to configure your system safely and clear up any of the questions and confusion that happens in those scenarios which we've been seeing. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any questions about our methodology here or concerns, you can reach out to our technical support, email our technical support.